Welcome back, everyone. We're here sitting down with Luis Zuniga. We're talk today about socialism in the United States. Now, Luis Zuniga was a political prisoner under the Castro regime in Cuba. He's also a former ambassador and has some very profound insights into this and what's happening in the country right now. Luis, it's a real pleasure having you on Crossroads. My pleasure. It's my pleasure. So tell us briefly about what happened in Cuba because you were a political prisoner and very outspoken again with, with, with what happened there. Uh, briefly tell us what happened. Let's, uh, let me summarize it because otherwise it's, it takes too long. Uh, uh, Cuba was uh, a, a very successful economical and social country in 1959, at the time of revolution, but there was a military uh, dictatorship with uh, only a care about politics, but nothing about the economy. They live freedom of economic uh, activities and so on. So Cuba was extremely successful. One of, was one of the leading economies in Latin America, and uh, uh, then uh, because of that dictatorship, uh, there were. Cubans said they refused uh, repression, political repression, violence, and, and at the end, the Castro regime succeeded. Uh, the Castro went to power with the promise that he would restore uh, full democracy, that he would make elections uh, in uh, 18 months, that uh, he would restore the constitution, that they, we will, uh, in, in, in a summary, that he will return to a normal country. He deceived everyone. He was a communist. Even he came to the U.S. and was asked many times, are you a communist? He said, no, no way. I'm a, democ a democratic leader. I am in favor of a democracy, and so on. He lied, as usual. All socialist leaders are liars. That's the truth. No one of them says the truth about their purpose, their goals, and their objectives. And so uh, Castro immediately started taking over the army, which is the real power, and with the support of a new army created by himself. Uh, so he took over all the institutions, confiscated private property, and fulfilled all the tenets of the communist doctrine. Uh, at this time, it's important to, to establish a difference between communist and socialist, socialism and communism. No country in the world has attained communism, not even the Soviet Union or China. So talking about a communist regime is false. Socialist regimes, socialist system. That's what we have had in the Soviet Union, in China, Vietnam, Cuba, Angola, uh, around the world. Socialist system. Uh, it's important at this time to understand that Castro uh, brought in the full uh, socialist system in full throttle, immense, confiscated all private property, confiscated all uh, educational system, uh, confiscated every private enterprise, everyone, not even one was left. That's full application of socialist system. And then what happened? He survived for around six, seven years with the huge resources he inherited from a, a capitalist Cuba. So in eight years, he exhausted all that wealth. So he started turning to the Soviet Union to receive all the support. And from then on, he, he, uh, he was uh, financed by the Soviet Union, and the Soviets were the ones who directed everything in Cuba. They were above everything in Cuba. Even though Fidel Castro appeared as the leader, the Soviets were the ones dictating what to do. There was a Soviet, uh, a Soviet expert on every, on every uh, ministry in Cuba. Everyone has a Soviet telling the minister what to do and how to do it. So that's the reality of Cuba. Uh, uh, as, the, as the communist system uh, or socialist system uh, has as a goal control of a whole society, even human beings are included in society, uh, they failed. The economic uh, system, socialist economic system, is a failure, centralized economy. It is a failure because it's contrary to human beings' uh, uh, efforts and, and wills and purpose, which is have a better living, 
standard living, uh, uh, living uh, st standard of living. Uh, so they they convert everyone in poor. Everyone in a social system becomes a poor. No private enterprise, so everyone becomes an employee of a state, and so they are in the lower caste. Everyone, no more classes, just one, poor, everyone. And then an elite, which have the, the, the good of their lives. They, they say that they are proletariats, they proclaim themselves as fighters for the poor, but they, they fulfill it, become everyone poor, but they live as riches. They live as millionaires. It's the same story on every single co socialist country. In, in the Soviet Union, they have the best places for them. They have uh, areas for them alone. In China, it's the same story. And in Cuba, it's the same. Uh, where are living the, the leaders of a revolution, social revolution in Cuba? In the former places of the bourgeoisie the same places they inherited and separated those places for themselves. That's true. So uh, that's what happened in Cuba. Full failure and, and the regime has remained in power out of two main reasons. First, military power and repression, violent repression. For many years, uh, uh, firing squads, executions, long terms of prison for everyone, even just for speaking against the regime, many years in prison, 10, 15 years sentence of prison, and uh, poverty. Everyone in the level of subsistence. For you to understand, now Cuba has an average income of be between 20 and $25 a month. The, the World Bank has set for Latin America, the level of $30 a day for a family income as the level of subsistence, not the level of poverty, subsistence. So Cuba is living really in a level of subsistence. How can Cubans may succeed in, in living because of a remittance system? Families abroad sends billions of dollars to Cuba to provide for their families to live. That's a real uh, eyesight of what so a socialist system is, Cuba. Hmm. Now, we see socialism kind of rearing its head now in the United States. It, you, it was a bad word 10 years ago. These days it's becoming very well accepted, especially among young people who believe that it does represent maybe a better life or you know, free things and getting rid of human suffering. Uh, what would you say to these young people who believe this? Educate yourself. Ignorance kill people. There is a classic lie that, that is used by socialist uh, ideologues, which is, look at the, at the countries of, uh, in, uh, like Sweden, Norway, uh, Denmark, which are socialist countries. No, that's a lie. Those are not socialist countries. Those are countries who have or which have a social democrat government. Social democrat is not an, a, a, a system. It's a political party. It's like Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. Democrats has, uh, Democrats have a social approach to, uh, to, uh, to how to govern the country. And Republicans has a more conservative view on how to govern the country. That's the same thing in those countries, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, all that. But they have capitalist system and democratic system, political democratic system, those. Socialism, social system, socialist system means centralized economy and, and, and one party system in a political system. You understand the difference? That's very clear. So uh, Bernie Sanders used to say, no, I am a, 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 a socialist democrat. No, that does not exist. That's a lie. 
That's a fabrication to deceive innocents that do not understand politics, that do not understand history, that have not seen real life. Now, a lot of people in the U.S., the idea that we could become a socialist country is unimaginable. It's, a lot of people don't believe it could ever possibly happen, although these days you do hear a lot of people now being concerned that it may happen. I know that Cuba as well was like this. Cuba was very far from socialism when Castro took power. What, I guess, what were the changes you saw as Castro took power and, and that relate to what you're seeing now? Do you see any similarities between these two systems? Yes. Uh, out of lack of knowledge, understanding what socialism is and what the goals of a socialist system are, uh, people tend to believe that socialism is related to social living. They are promising or proclaiming as their tenets equality, uh, benefits for everyone. Uh, it's a lot of promises that they will never fulfill. Those are lies. Those are tools they use for the people to provide them access to the power. Once they sit on the power, everything turns different, totally different. It's the same story. We, uh, wealthy countries, I told you before how wealthy Cuba was before the revolution, before socialism. Venezuela was extremely wealthy, was the wealthiest country in Latin America. Today, people die of hunger in Venezuela. Venezuela has the largest oil resources in the world. They have to make lines to have gas for the cars. That's socialism. And the U.S., no matter how wealthy the United States, how powerful economically the U.S. is, if socialism comes to the U.S., the United States will become a poor country. Take another instance, the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was the largest country in the world. I mean, as you know, it's a, it's a union of republics. It was a union of republics, but was the wealthiest country in the world. It has the largest resources, 22 million uh, of square kilometers, the largest by far. The U.S. is 9 million. The Soviet Union was 22 million. So, and the largest resources, oil, uh, oil, uh, um, metals, everything the Soviet Union had. What happened to the Soviet Union? Extremely poor. Extremely poor. So, if, if, if the Americans want to live in poverty, all they have to do is proclaim socialism and vote for socialist uh, people. Now, based on what you've seen, what is it in the socialist system that creates poverty like this? Because a lot of people would say, oh, well, we will do it differently. We've learned from these systems. We'll do it differently. Yeah. What would you say to that? That's very simple. The economic system, as I told you before, is a centralized economy. It means that no private property. First thing they do is to confiscate all private businesses and properties. You cannot have a building, real estate. You only have you may only have may own your own home where you live. Nothing else. Everything else is confiscated by the state. You could not have a business. You cannot have a cafeteria. You cannot go out on the street selling in a cart. No, that's private property. You cannot have it. All businesses, all services and means of production become pro ownership of a regime, of a government. They own everything, so you become an employee. If you are an employee, you can, that's what you can expect. And besides becoming an employee, it depends on your political affinity to the regime. Because if you reject the regime, if you, uh, 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 you do not accept adherence to the government policy, Immediately, you may be thrown out of your work, you may be unemployed, and you, or you may be uh, given the worst uh, 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 jobs available. So everyone become poor. Everyone become because what is the wealth? How how countries create wealth? Out of enterprises, 
private initiative is the, is the, the engine to create wealth. And they try to, to, to uh, give out wealth that they do not create. They are unable to create wealth because government enterprises are always a failure everywhere. In the U.S., in China, in Cuba, in, in Vietnam, in Angola, everywhere, government enterprises are condemned to failure because when nobody owns anything, nobody has anything. Hmm. And what we've seen in China, too, that they've, they maintain some degree of success by two reasons. One, mainly because they have state subsidies, and so they go into countries and they underbid and basically take over the markets, meaning they can take advantage of foreign countries using a system that doesn't need to make a profit in order to make, make contracts. And number two is they steal intellectual property from Western countries. They steal the innovation. Mm -hmm. I know that in China. I know that very well. I know that uh, China recognized, the, uh, well, not Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong was a Stalinist, indeed. He did not accept any, uh, any economic practice uh, meaning capitalism, indeed. But Chu Lai was uh, a reformer. He understood that the Soviet Union was collapsing because they were a military power without an economy to support that structure, military structure. So he realized that he needed economy, to have an economy, to have an income, to improve the economy, to get to earn the resources, to support the military structure and an inefficient system because China was a third world country before they started the, uh, the, f the economic zone, the special economic zones. Most people think in the world, I have given, given lectures on this issue too, they believe that China has adopted capitalism and that's the great success China has. We wish it would be wonderful if China adopt as a national policy capitalist economy. But it is not. It's only on the, on, the, on the coastal areas with the special economic areas. As you may know, they created four in 1982, and then they created three more. And at the end of 19, uh, when the Times Square massacre in 1989, there were around 14 economic zones. Those economic zones behaved, were separated from the rest of China, even Chinese are not able to move to those areas. They need a hukou, a special passport to move to those areas. So that's our China inside China. You see, those are areas which are capitalist areas because the United States made a big mistake of offering investments, even given the, the, the most uh, uh, a privilege in, in trade, the most, uh, I, don't, I cannot recall now the, the name, is a, 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 a special concession on trade, uh, being able to uh, export to the U.S. Uh, goods and, uh, at, at low tariffs and, and so on. But the Chinese made all their money out of capitalist system in those areas in those areas, not in the rest. Even I invite uh, lecturers or people interested in these issues to read the last uh, meeting of the uh, People's Assembly. This is the communist uh, legislative uh, uh, power in China. Uh, Li King Qiang, read this, uh, his uh, speech acknowledging that over 800 million of Chinese live in extreme poverty. Extreme poverty. And yeah, this was recent. Yeah. Why? Because all the income from these capitalist special economic zones are used for the military. They are quadrupling their nuclear power. They are building the most modern uh, navy, navy ships. Uh, they are uh, strong, uh, strengthening the military power. They are uh, developing imperialism, economic imperialism in Africa and Latin America. 
those, the resources in a socialist government goes to the military and to the hegemonism, which is one of the main goals of socialism, to take over the world, take over the world. I am sure, I am sure that most of the money that has been flowing to Latin America, Cuba, Venezuela, and all others, and the United States come from China to subvert American democracy because they formally they try to overturn small countries around the world to make them socialist. They realized that they that they was easier just to turn socialist the U.S. and if the U.S. becomes a socialist country, then the whole world will fall down. Now, sir, just last question. You talked about how if America falls, the whole world will fall into socialism. Uh, can you explain this a bit more? What is the significance in this battle between freedom and socialism? What is the significance of the United States? Well, because the United States is, uh, is the, the beacon of freedom, democracy. Look, whatever there is, whatever there is a problem, what do they first do? Turn to the U.S. Turn to the U.S. If there is a national disaster everywhere, who is the first provider? The United States. If there is a, 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 any country, a democratic country, is in peril, what do they do? Ask assistance from the United States. So the United States is uh, most of, uh, of uh, people in countries uh, struggling or fighting for democracy in their countries, where do they receive assistance, help? From the U.S. So uh, that's why it is a goal, a, a target for socialism, the United States. And uh, uh, I am sure that at this time there are strong forces inside the United States pushing hard to turn to socialism. Some people may say, well, but uh, they are not socialists. They don't tell you. They never tell you. Look at Fidel Castro. Look at Chavez. Did they say we are socialists? No, they didn't say so. But they materialize. They implement socialism. And when you realize that you are under the grip of a socialist regime, you're done. As uh, Antunes said before, take care of your democracy because once you lose it, it will take decades, hunger, prison, misery, all the same experiences that all socialist countries have lived will come over you to the US. And later, it doesn't matter that you say, Oh my goodness, I didn't know. Oh my goodness, nobody told me. No way, you lost it. Venezuelans, we, we warn Venezuelans, don't vote for Chavez. Chavez is a socialist. Chavez will become a dictator. No way, we are strong, we are a great country. We are a rich country. Nobody can impose socialism on us. And you know what? Chavez imposed socialism on them. And I told them, you're not different from Poles, Germans, Czechs, Cubans. And we all came under the grip of socialist regimes. So don't, don't over, over consider this warning. Please, take care of your democracy. There is no system like democracy with the freedoms, the rights, the opportunities to decide and to have whatever or attain whatever you can attain with your talents, with your capacities or your hard work. That's only a privilege of a democratic and a system and an economic capitalist system. Socialism is a disaster. Learn, study, look, read for you to understand it. Yes, sir, it's a real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thank you. You're welcome.